it is now my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Gabriel Noaha from NVIDIA Corporation, uh, and he'll be talking a little bit about NVIDIA Cloud Solutions. Over to you. Thank you, Matthias. Um, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining this uh, session. Um, so yeah, I'm Gabriel Noaja. I'm a senior solution architect at NVIDIA. I'm actually based in Singapore, uh, but I'm covering uh, Australia and New Zealand. And I do work with a lot of universities, uh, supercomputing centers and other entities in, um, in Australia and New Zealand. So I'm happy to, to be here, as I said. And I'll be talking a little bit about the, the work that NVIDIA is doing to integrate um, cloud native technologies. So how do we leverage GPUs uh, in containers, in uh, Kubernetes? Uh, you've seen uh, in, the, in the previous talk from Stefan that uh, he mentioned that there are some challenges. Uh, I do hope to, to answer uh, some of those challenges. And uh, if there are still things that uh, you think uh, are not working properly when you're using uh, GPUs, uh, um, please uh, reach out to me. You have my email address there uh, and I'll be putting it in the document that uh, Matthias is uh, sharing. Uh, so please feel free to, to reach out to, to me uh, for any further questions after the, the session. So with that, uh, let's uh, get us started. First of all, uh, I wanted to, to start by introducing the uh, NVIDIA GPU Cloud. Uh, in the previous talks, uh, both presenters talked about uh, different repositories that are available for uh, uh, containers. Uh, NVIDIA has started uh, a couple of years ago a, uh, a similar work to create a repository of containers, uh, which we called NVIDIA GPU Cloud at the time, uh, or NGC in short. Uh, it might not be the, the best uh, uh, name. Uh, again, I, I don't totally agree with our uh, marketing department. It's not a, a proper cloud per se. So don't think that you can actually get access to, uh, to a bunch of uh, virtual machines with GPUs despite the, the name. But what NGC is, is a, a repository of containers or at least this is how it started. And now we have more than 100 plus containers for uh, high performance computing, deep learning, machine learning. Um, and uh, we are continuously expanding and adding, uh, adding new applications uh, and new containers into this uh, repository. But as I said, uh, this was just the beginning. We expanded since then to add a lot of uh, new, uh, uh, new things. We are now providing uh, pre-trained models. So for the, those of you who are uh, doing deep learning, we are uh, providing uh, pre-trained models that you can simply download and uh, use the, the models as they are, or uh, go a, <clears throat> a step forward, uh, further and retrain those models using techniques like transfer learning toolkit to actually uh, uh, customize the, those pre-trained models for your specific workload. We're also providing uh, industry application frameworks. Uh, there's a wide range of uh, uh, verticals from uh, healthcare to uh, computer vision to uh, automatic uh, uh, speech recognition. All these verticals, uh, uh, we know that it's uh, pretty difficult to, to create uh, this type of application or end-to-end -end solution. So what we're putting together is frameworks. So basically, sometimes it can be a, a suite of containers. Sometimes it can be one big container with all the tools that NVIDIA is providing for GPU acceleration on those specific domains. And we're making this uh, available again under NGC. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing that we are providing under NGC is Helm charts. Uh, you might be familiar with uh, with Helm. Uh, it's providing an easy way to to do uh, to do deployments, and there are a couple of tools that are uh, available under Helm charts. Uh, you can see there uh, there are two mentions: Triton and GPU operator. Let me switch to the laser point. Triton and GPU operator. Uh, Triton is providing uh, inferencing services, which again, it relies heavily on uh, containerization and GPU operator. It's an easy way to, uh, to prepare your environment for uh, running uh, GPU containers. Uh, 
Uh, we're also providing uh, collection this uh, yet another feature of, uh, of NGC where uh, we're putting together uh, different containers, uh, pre-trained models for specific type of uh, workloads. The beauty of NGC is that it works both on-prem and on cloud. So if you're using NGC containers, it's, you can pay, seamlessly uh, transition your uh, workload or your scripts from on-prem to the cloud or from the cloud to, to on-prem. And even on the, the edge, so you can run the, these containers on embedded devices, again, which have uh, GPU capabilities. Uh, think about uh, the NVIDIA Jetson series, if you're familiar. Those are small uh, embedded modules that can run uh, accelerated uh, code. So if you haven't used NGC before and you're in the, uh, uh, in the area of uh, either HPC or deep learning or machine learning, I highly encourage you to take a look at the, uh, at the NGC catalog. I'm, and I'm pretty sure you'll find something of interest uh, in there. Why did we uh, came up with, uh, with the idea of creating this NGC catalog? First of all, uh, as you might know, and as has been pointed uh, earlier, it's not always easy to, for a sysadmin to, to install an application. And especially uh, this all started uh, uh, at the, uh, when people started to, to be interested in, in deep learning. A deep learning framework might have more than uh, a couple of dozens dependencies when you want to install, for example, TensorFlow. So, uh, and you need to, to get all of those right. And it's not just the, uh, I'm talking about uh, Python uh, libraries, I'm talking about uh, CUDA libraries, I'm talking about uh, the, uh, the GPU drivers. So there are a lot of things that have to, to come together in order to, to, to have a, not only a working version of, uh, of, the, uh, of the framework or of the software, but also a performant running version because sometimes there are uh, compilation flags. There are things that you need to, uh, to, to make sure when you're uh, installing the application that are tuned in order to get the best performance out of, the, the, uh, uh, of your application. So we came with the idea of uh, NGC where we have a, uh, an entire team of engineers who are building this container. So these are uh, built uh, for performance and they're scalable. Uh, now we have a monthly update release cycle. So every month we are releasing a new version of the containers. Uh, and this is true specifically for the, the deep learning ones. For the HPC ones, it really depends on when the, uh, the application developers are releasing a, a, a new version. And the good thing is that uh, being managed by uh, NVIDIA and having an entire uh, team of engineers working on this, we can ensure that basically uh, there's, a, uh, there's a pretty strict quality of service. So. Uh, you can be certain that from one version to another of the uh, of a uh, deep learning container, the performance will only uh, go up. Uh, obviously, as I said, we're doing a lot of work and uh, integration with our own libraries, with our own compilers, which again, they, they're uh, updated regularly. So with every release of, the, of an NGC container, uh, this has been, uh, uh, integrated into the, into the containers that are published on the NGC catalog. And with every new version, basically we are improving the, the performance of those containers. Uh, deployment everywhere, uh, we do support, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this. Uh, we do support uh, Docker, uh, Cryo, uh, Container D and Singularity. Um, it was mentioned previously that uh, why don't we, uh, or and we've been asked uh, the, the same question, why don't we create a singularity um, repository where it's actually easier to, to have a Docker container and then uh, pretty seamlessly with a single command line to transform the, the Docker containers in, in, into singularity. And as it was mentioned previously, there are a couple of other reasons. And it's not that difficult to, to basically just have a, uh, a unified repository of uh, Docker images and then use those with other um, container runtimes. Uh, we do support uh, running in, in multiple type of environments, uh, bare metal uh, and virtual machines and Kubernetes. And I, again, I'm gonna talk about a, a couple of these uh, scenarios. And as already mentioned, we support both multi-cloud on-prem 
uh, hybrid and edge. So basically any combination of this uh, will, uh, will allow you to, to use NGC. Um, and once again, this uh, enterprise ready software, uh, we do have uh, testing uh, for reliability and um, um, uh, regressions. Uh, we are uh, scanning the, the containers for CFZ, CVEs, uh, or malware, uh, and we're publishing the, the report. So everything is uh, pretty uh, strictly um, uh, controlled. So there are multiple things uh, that uh, are available. There, there's a wide range of uh, use cases. There's a wide range of pre-trained models, and, and the, there's a fairly wide range of uh, resources available in, in, in NGC. Uh, a new feature that we introduced recently is called credentials that allows you to basically have a, a tracking of how, for example, a model has been uh, trained or how a Docker container has been built. You, you can see what has gone inside the uh, inside building that uh, that container or the uh, how a specific model has been uh, has been trained. Um, and I already mentioned this. Uh, we do have end-to-end -end AI workflows for uh, different type of uh, applications from uh, speech recognition to uh, recommender systems to intelligent video analytics. So these are large uh, uh, domains or verticals uh, for which we're uh, targeting end-to-end -end frameworks. And there uh, I only have a couple of uh, them uh, mentioned here. So for example, Metropolis is our end-to-end -end workflow uh, for uh, smart cities, uh, or more specifically, intelligent video analytics. And all this work uh, and can be deployed uh, everywhere. Uh, we have very tight integration with almost all the, the major uh, public cloud uh, providers. And we have a range of uh, OEM uh, systems that are certified by NVIDIA. And we're making sure that the, uh, the NGC containers are uh, working perfectly on these uh, OEM uh, certified systems. So if you haven't had a chance, I highly encourage you to, to go to, to ngc.nvidia.com. Uh, uh, we have multiple resources like technical blogs, we have webinars, um, and just simply go there, uh, register. Uh, yeah, there's free registration. You don't need to, uh, to pay anything to access uh, the, the NGC repository and uh, take a look and uh, see if there's uh, something of interest uh, for you in there. So NGC is the, the foundation of our cloud native approach to, to deliver consistent deployments. There are multiple things that have to, to come together uh, to, to make this, uh, this cloud native uh, initiative uh, come true. We are working on, on multiple uh, fronts. Uh, I already uh, mentioned Helm charts. We are working in, uh, on integrating uh, GPUs in Kubernetes, and uh, I'm going to talk in the next couple of slides on uh, how do we do that. Uh, we are putting everything together in the form of a, a tool called the GPU operator that automates the, the GPU resources uh, in Kubernetes, both the installation, the monitoring, and the deployment of the um, of a uh, container and GPU support inside the uh, Kubernetes. And we have the, the NGC Helm uh, registries that are available. So I'm gonna focus uh, in the next couple of slides on uh, these two topics, uh, mostly Kubernetes and the GPU operator. And what, is the, what are the, the things that uh, we've, uh, we are bringing uh, to the community to make this uh, integration easier? So first of all, one thing to, uh, uh, to be aware of, now that I introduced uh, NGC and the rationale for which we created, I'm gonna switch gears and talk a little bit the, about the, the support of uh, GPUs uh, in containers and specifically in, uh, in Kubernetes and how do we achieve that. Uh, and since general support for GPUs in containers is a prerequisite uh, for Kubernetes, I'm gonna start there. So the first thing to note is that unlike most uh, containerized applications, when you're talking about an NVIDIA GPU enabled uh, container, uh, that requires some uh, extra runtime support in order to guarantee that they're gonna run on machines with different NVIDIA GPU drivers version installed. 
And here's a, it's a very simple example. Normally, if you set an NVIDIA driver library in the user space that, uh, that don't match the exact version of the NVIDIA kernel module running on the host, then the application link, uh, linking to those libraries will fail to run. So if you have a container, for example, that has the NVIDIA driver libraries version one, and you're trying to run on a system with a, uh, with a version one kernel module installed, it will work. But if you're trying to do the same thing, on another system where you have uh, version two of the, the kernel module installed, that's gonna fail and the container uh, won't be able to, uh, uh, to work. So to solve this, we are providing a, uh, a package called NVIDIA Container Toolkit, uh, which takes care to, uh, to ensure that the compatible NVIDIA driver libraries are injected into a container at runtime as well as uh, give an application access to any of the, uh, the required GPU hardware. So the, uh, there are multiple uh, layers inside of the, uh, the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, but, and I'm not going to go through, uh, through all the details, but having the NVIDIA Container Toolkit is basically a prerequisite to have the GPUs exposed at uh, the, uh, the container uh, runtime. Once you have that, uh, and many of you might have uh, likely interacted with the NVIDIA Container Toolkit through a Docker command line, uh, but I want to, to give you just uh, a, a one-pager overview of how that, uh, that works. Uh, so this basically says when you're uh, running Docker and you're, you just have, you've seen previously how to, to run a Docker uh, command or you probably have experience with that. So in order to, to run this in the, using the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, uh, if everything is set up correctly, you're just gonna have to add the, the dash dash uh, GPUs and then the, uh, the devices which you want to expose inside of the, the container. So in this case, we're uh, saying that one device zero and one, um, and here you actually get the, uh, the details of what those, uh, um, uh, what those GPUs are. And what this basically says is launch a Docker container, but with the GPU support and uh, inject the support for GPU zero and one uh, into the, the container and run the NVIDIA SMI uh, command uh, from that uh, uh, Docker image. So to make this possible, this command hooks into a component called the NVIDIA Docker, uh, which is uh, just one small piece of the overall uh, container toolkit that uh, I'll be talking about. And the toolkit itself consists of a stack of components, allowing the, the GPUs to be discovered and to be used by uh, many different container runtimes. Uh, depending on the container runtime, uh, they will hook into different layers of the stack depending on the uh, on their integration points. So this is how the integration looks like for uh, Docker. Uh, for example, this is how container D uh, hooks in here, uh, and this is the uh, how the the cryo uh, cryo hooks into the same uh, environment. As you can see, they're, they're actually going at, uh, at different uh, levels and this is the, uh, the, how uh, Lexis also hooks into, into the same uh, toolkit. And of all these components, the, the, uh, the bottom one is the, uh, the most important, the, the lib NVIDIA dash uh, container, uh, because this does all of the, the heavy lifting for injecting the, the GPU support into the uh, into the container uh, again without going into the specifics you probably uh, know that uh, there are multiple things that have to, to work uh, and, and to be done uh, from the from a container perspective for this to, to be possible uh, you have the the device that has to be passed to the to the uh, uh, container environment uh, in order to, to be able to, to simply do this from, uh, from a user perspective uh, and just type dash dash GPUs and then the, the devices that you want to, to expose inside of, the, uh, inside of the containers. So now that we uh, set up how, how we are working, uh, how do we support GPUs inside of the container? Uh, in the context of Kubernetes, uh, one needs to, to ensure that the, the container runtime is in use and is configured properly in order to, to work with the NVIDIA Container Toolkit um, under the hood. Uh, Kubernetes itself, uh, 
has uh, ways to uh, to do that. So, for example, in uh, in Docker, there's a the uh, the daemon .json file that has to be uh, edited. So this is how you would configure uh, Docker. Um, this is how you configure container D. Uh, again, I don't want to spend too, too much time on this. Uh, I'm going to provide the, the slides uh, and there are a couple of other references that you can uh, take a look at. But it's just to, to give you an idea that uh, we are working to, to integrate a, as, uh, as a wide range possible of, uh, of solution and, uh, and runtimes. And this is the, uh, this is the, the cry of so without going into the specifics on how do you, how, how you do the configuration from a user perspective, because this is what most of you might be interested in is, uh, once you have everything set up, a, a, a component called NVIDIA Kubernetes device plugin uh, can be installed to, uh, to allow the GPU resources to be uh, requested as shown here. So what you're here, uh, what, you, uh, what you're uh, seeing here is basically, a, uh, a config file where you have the resources uh, exposed and then the uh, the resources are basically uh, nvidia.com slash GPU. Uh, it says that the, there are four GPUs and then the uh, the specifics of the, uh, for that node. So you have the, the, um, the specific model of the GPU, the, the CUDA runtime and the, the CUDA driver that uh, it's being exposed to the uh, Kubernetes device plugin. The other thing that, uh, uh, so, yeah, so I, I jumped a little bit uh, ahead. So you have the, the Kubernetes device plugin that basically allows Kubernetes to be aware of the uh, presence of the GPUs. And you also have, a, we have a, uh, there's a second uh, plugin called the GPU feature discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an additional component that can be installed to apply labels to, to a node with the, with the various properties. And again, if you have the, the GPU feature discovery installed in Kubernetes, uh, this can be automatically uh, populated because the GPU feature discovery will do exactly this, will uh, get the, uh, the details of the, the specific model of the GPU will get the, uh, the version of the runtime and the version of the, um, uh, the driver. So through the not selector, a user can uh, define, uh, so a user can de define a, a, a node selector uh, to direct the port to a, uh, to a node with a specific type of GPUs installed, for example. So if you have a, um, a cluster with multiple type of GPUs, so I'm showing here a T4, V100s, and A100s, you can specify here the, uh, the, uh, what are the, the configurations of the node that you want the, uh, the container to, to be run on. <clears throat> also, uh, um, oops. Sorry, I messed the, the slides a bit. Oh, no worries. One of the things uh, that uh, we uh, we introduced recently uh, for the for Kubernetes, what I uh, presented previously is how to expose an entire GPU inside of a container and Kubernetes. In the latest version of the, the GPUs, uh, and I'm talking here about the, <clears throat> sorry, about the Ampere architecture GPUs, so namely the A100s and the A30 GPUs, we introduced a new feature called uh, multi-instance GPUs. So multi-instance GPU allows you to basically slice a full GPU into uh, into smaller components, so you, you can basically create multiple GPU instances on a single GPU. Each of them will have a dedicated uh, number of streaming multiprocessors or the uh, or the execution cores, a dedicated portion of the memory, a dedicated portion of the auto cache, and this allows for simultaneous uh, workload execution with guaranteed quality of service. So this is the, the big advantage. So if you're running something on one GPU instance and uh, let's say you have something else on another GPU instance and uh, that second program is crashing on the second GPU instance, that's not going to affect whatever it's running on the, um, on the first uh, GPU instance. 
There are multiple ways uh, to do the partitioning. So multi-instance GPU is pretty flexible. Uh, you can, uh, depending on the GPU that you're using, so I'm going to refer mostly to the A100, <laughs> which is our flagship GPU. Uh, you can partition the, the GPU in up to uh, seven different uh, partitions. The the work that is running in every of the uh, any of those partitions, as I said, is completely uh, isolated. And we can do the deployment uh, again uh, in different type of environments. You can run this bare metal. Uh, you can uh, address this through containers or uh, through Kubernetes. And because the uh, the main purpose of this uh, talk is how to integrate this with uh, with Kubernetes mostly, uh, I'm going to refer to to that. But first of all, let's uh, let me show you why would you want to, to do that. One of the, the things, and we are actually using this a lot uh, internally, and it's actually one of the main uh, use cases for multi-instance GPU, is a specific process might not be able for, and this is uh, specifically true when we're talking about inference, uh, when you want to, to run multiple inference jobs, they might not use the entire uh, capability of the uh, entire GPU. So you want to run multiple uh, inference jobs inside of the same GPU. So you might have, for example, small processes uh, that are uh, taking um, uh, queries, for example, for, uh, automat uh, for an automatic uh, speech recognition application. Uh, you might have a, a use case where you actually have a, uh, a single tenant but multiple users. So think about uh, the case of, I know, a, uh, a small development team or a university where you have a couple of uh, GPUs, but you don't, and you have a, a classroom where you're teaching a specific uh, either deep learning course or HPC course, and you don't want to give access to, to the entire uh, uh, classroom, I mean, you don't want to give access to each of those students in the class to uh, a full GPU just to, to prototype a small application. You're gonna, you are gonna could actually divide that uh, GPU into seven uh, MIG instances and each student will get a uh, its own portion of the, the GPU. Or you can have, uh, and this is what we're seeing mostly in cloud service providers, this is how the, uh, they are using the, the, uh, the multi-instance GPU capability. Uh, where you can uh, actually looking at multi-tenant, multi-user. So they want to, to make the, the, uh, the most out of the, um, um, of the GPUs of the infrastructure. And uh, based on the, the different requirements that the users are having, they, they want to make sure that the, uh, the hardware is uh, highly utilized. So why, why would you want to, to do this? Uh, this is just a, a very simple uh, um, a performance graph. If one seventh of the A100 GPU is more or less the equivalent of uh, one previous uh, V100. So if you're running uh, with seven uh, MIG instances on the A100, basically you're getting seven times the, the performance of a, of a V100. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, benchmarking on this. Uh, if you're interested, I can provide you more details. Uh, if you're familiar with MLPerf, which is a de facto uh, benchmarking for the for the deep learning world, uh, one thing that we showed in, in the latest uh, MLPerf release is how you can actually put, again, multiple um, containers and micro workloads running on each of those different MIG instances and all running at full performance. Um, now, switching back to, uh, or getting closer to, to the Kubernetes, uh, in a DGX100, which is uh, our uh, system with eight uh, GPUs, there are multiple uh, ways in which you can split the, the GPUs. The easiest um, and maybe one of the, uh, the most traditional way of doing it is you have seven uh, MIG instances on each A100 times eight, it will give you basically 56 uh, MIG profiles that a, a user could potentially access. So uh, hypothetically, uh, there might be 56 different users or 56 different jobs that can run on the, uh, on the A100. But 
having the, the MIG capability comes with its uh, own challenges, both from the, the operating system. So this is being exposed at the, um, at, the, um, at the kernel level through a uh, separate um, method. Normally, uh, you have the NVIDIA devices available under the, the slash dev, uh, but with, in, in the case of the, the MIG instances, these are uh, exposed under the, the slash proc. So that brings, uh, again, a new set of challenges because uh, not only you have to have the, the slash dev <clears throat> inside of the, the uh, pass inside of the, the containers, but now you also have to, to have the, the slash proc, which is providing the, uh, the capabilities for uh, MIG. So how do we do the, uh, now the, the integration of MIG into containers and uh, Kubernetes? The, from a user perspective, uh, it will be again, fairly simple from switching, uh, or when running, you, have, you only have to, to switch from uh, using the uh, a GPU identifier to using a <clears throat> basically a uh, sub ID for each of the GPUs. So here you have the same two GPUs that you've seen previously. And in the, uh, when we were not using the MIG mode, you were just passing the, the device equal, uh, equals zero and one to pass all the GPUs. In the MIG mode here, we act, what we did, we actually created only two MIG instances on each of the GPUs. And we are specifying that we want to pass all the four MIG instances into the uh, Docker, to the Docker runtime. So as you can see, the, the way to do that is basically a zero, uh, semicolon zero, zero, semicolon one. And this is basically the identifier of the GPU and the, um, yeah, uh, I had already uh, this one highlighted and uh, you're specifying the, the GPU and then the MIG instance that you want on inside of that GPU. Obviously, there's no need to, to pass all of them. You can uh, create any combination that, uh, that you want uh, following the, uh, the index of the GPU and the index of the, uh, of the MIG partition. Alternatively, you could also use the, uh, the unique identifier, the UID. Uh, that is available here to uh, uniquely identify the uh, the big instance. Now, as you've seen <clears throat> previously, the uh, the this, uh, the GPU support inside of the uh, of Kubernetes was being exposed to the Kubernetes. Uh, device plugin. Now, what we are doing, uh, and this is already available, we've modified that in order to uh, expose as a, a as a resource a MIG instance. And instead of have simply having just the uh, the resource uh, mentioned as a full GPU, you're actually having the the resource at the MIG level. So you can have a sub section or a sub partition of the GPU. As a, uh, as a resource inside uh, Kubernetes. So in this case, we are basically exposing a MIG partition uh, with uh, five gigabytes of, uh, of memory. So basically you can allocate uh, here uh, or you can run the, the container on this, uh, on this uh, MIG partition or whatever MIG uh, device type you want. Uh, all this is uh, customizable. There's, a, uh, there's another tool that it will allow you to, to do that. In terms of resources, basically, uh, you can have a, uh, a mixture of um, different MIG devices or the full GPU can be uh, advertised under the same underlying uh, node with this strategy. So uh, it provides quite a fair bit of uh, flexibility in, um, in doing that. Uh, this is in contrast to, to what we, we call a, a single uh, strategy. Uh, we do provide the option to, to actually uh, expose here the entire GPU and under the denote selector, uh, we are providing the, uh, the labels, but you need uh, to make sure that the labels are defined such that the user is still able to, uh, to get to the underlying uh, MIG device that uh, they, they want. So basically you have two strategies in which you can uh, expose the, uh, the MIG capabilities inside uh, Kubernetes. Now you've seen that there are uh, there, there are a lot of things that uh, and you need to uh, to install and deploy in order to to get the support for GPU inside of uh, a 
uh, the Docker runtime and inside of Kubernetes. In order to streamline all that, we came up uh, with a, a tool called the GPU operator. So this is one of the, the multiple products that uh, our cloud native team uh, works on. Again, it's, an, um, it's a tool that is available for free. Uh, I'll provide you the, uh, the links uh, in, the, in the slides. So what is the, the problem that the GPU operator is trying to solve? It enables infrastructure teams to, to manage the, the life cycle of the, the GPUs when using uh, Kubernetes. So there's no need to manage each node individually. Uh, previously, the, the infrastructure team had to, to basically do uh, the configuration of all, the, all those different uh, uh, bits and pieces of software that I uh, mentioned previously. So with GPU operator, basically uh, that allows to create, basically you can use the same CPU gold image and then the uh, both on the CPU nodes and on the GPU nodes. And on top of that uh, CPU image, we are adding the, the GPU operator for the, uh, for the GPU nodes. Um, so this allows the, the customers to, to run GPU accelerated operate, uh, applications on uh, immutable operating uh, systems. We are also integrating this with uh, Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat, uh, CentOS, and we're working on uh, a couple of others um, in the near future. So what is the, the GPU operator? It's basically an open source package as a Helm chart. Uh, and I mentioned uh, when I was talking about MGC, this is available under uh, MGC if you're interested, or you can download it separately from the uh, NVIDIA GPU operator uh, websites. And it, uh, and it includes a couple of uh, components here that are sitting on top of, um, of Kubernetes and are exposing services to, uh, to uh, Kubernetes. The first one is the, uh, the GPU feature discovery. Uh, and this labels the, the worker node based on the GPU specs so that the, the customer uh, can more granularly uh, select the GPU resources that the application requires. Then we have the, uh, the NVIDIA driver. As I said, this is a prerequisite and you need to make sure that uh, uh, you have the, the proper driver installed. Uh, the, the Kubernetes device plugin, uh, this is advertised, uh, advertises the, the GPUs to the Kubernetes scheduler. Uh, the container runtime, uh, this is not just the, the runtime uh, uh, here, but the, the entire NVIDIA container toolkit, out of which the NVIDIA container runtime is a subcomponent. And the, the DCGM uh, monitoring. DCGM monitoring is uh, DCGM in itself. Uh, it's a data center GPU manager. It's a tool that, uh, that's what DCGM stands for. Um, DCGM is a tool that allows you to do GPU monitoring. And the DCGM monitoring is basically a uh, yet another plugin that allows you to do monitoring of the GPUs inside of uh, Kubernetes and then expose that to, uh, to, uh, to different tools that are doing um, aggregation of, uh, of what's happening inside of your uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster, for example, uh, Kubeflow or others. So the GPU operator uh, ecosystem, uh, it works again on basically um, any container platform. Uh, it supports OpenShift, Kubernetes, Xanthos, Azure Stack Edge, Amazon uh, AKS, uh, VMware Tanzu. It supports multiple container engines and multiple operating systems uh, for a full list of uh, supported uh, software and hardware. Uh, I highly encourage you to, to go to, to the link here. But if we dive a little bit uh, deeper inside of the, the GPU uh, operator, uh, it does basically all the steps that I mentioned previously. Uh, uh, in the interest of time, because I, it looks like I'm running uh, a little bit uh, behind, you are gonna have, uh, one, when you're doing the, uh, the GPU operating installation, it will take you multiple steps from uh, installing the and starting the, the uh, NFD uh, service as a daemon set, uh, configuring the, the NFD uh, plugin, which enables the, uh, uh, the labeling, uh, then it will install the NVIDIA container runtime and the driver. Uh, then uh, it will go through a validated process. Basically we have a container that will validate the, uh, the installation. And then uh, 
it will do the installation of the device plugin, the DCGM exporter, which is providing the DCGM monitoring capabilities, and the MIG manager that exposes the, the MIG uh, capabilities. So all these are installed uh, very seamlessly to the uh, through a Helm chart um, and gets everything installed on the on the GPU node. So it allows you to, uh, to quickly start from, uh, from day zero with uh, everything that uh, you need. And all the capabilities are installed automatically by the, uh, by the GPU operator. In case uh, there's a need to, to rebuild any of the images, again, it can reinstall an updated driver. It can either install um, pre-compiled drivers or it can compile the, uh, the GPU drivers if the kernel is changing. So there's a fair bit of uh, capabilities and uh, features when you're going with the, with the GPU operator. Um, the MIG manager, as I said, it's, uh, it's providing all the, the capabilities uh, for the, the MIG discovery. And again, you really need to make sure that you have this if you want to use the, the MIG capabilities if you're having an infrastructure that is using A100 nodes. And the, the main manager is actually relying on another uh, tool, is basically a wrapper for uh, the, the MIG partition tool, uh, which is available on GitHub. So even if you're not using the GPU operator, uh, but you want to, to run, for example, on a bare metal solution without Kubernetes um, or anything, and you want to have access, an easy way to, uh, to the MIG configuration, and partitioning, I highly encourage you to take a look at this uh, MIG partition um, editor to expose these capabilities even outside of uh, outside of Kubernetes. And now the uh, the last uh, uh, few slides that I, I wanted to, to mention, everything that uh, I presented previously is open source and available for free, and and it's mostly uh, a bare metal solution. Obviously, we are supporting all of this in a virtualized environment, and specifically, we are having a partnership with NVIDIA, uh, with uh, a VM, a VMware, where we're working together to basically transform the, the data center and address the challenges in bringing uh, the AI support to enterprises. So I know this is uh, mostly a, uh, a research community, but if you need enterprise uh, capabilities, we basically came up with uh, uh, this partnership with VMware where we're integrating a, um, and this is called NVIDIA AI Enterprise. We are integrating three main components, mainly the accelerated servers, which are cert uh, NVIDIA certified servers, the, uh, the VMware vSphere with Tanzu. So this is the, um, uh, VMware's own implementation of Kubernetes and the NVIDIA AI Enterprise Software Suite. Uh, the NVIDIA AI Enterprise Suite is basically a subset of NGC, which is curated and tested to, to run on top of the uh, VMware vSphere with, uh, with Tanzu and to, to make sure that they're uh, compatible with the uh, OEM service. So if you're interested in, uh, in something that provides uh, full support, uh, that is uh, enterprise grade. I highly encourage you to take a look at the uh, NVIDIA AI Enterprise uh, Suite. And as I said, without going into into the uh, the specifics, uh, we are working with uh, uh, with VMware to have all these um, containers that are available inside NVIDIA AI Enterprise Suite to to run seamlessly on top of the, uh, the Tanzu, which uh, as I said, is the, the Kubernetes uh, implementation from, uh, from VMware. One thing uh, to, to note here, due to the uh, tight integration that we are doing both in hardware and in software, uh, one interesting thing is that basically you can uh, see close to bare metal performance uh, when you're using the, uh, the NVIDIA AI Enterprise uh, Suite. And again, if you're uh, having this kind of environment where, you, uh, where you're running uh, VMware and you want integration with, uh, with VMware, um, I highly encourage you to, to take, a look at, uh, take a look at this. So with that, uh, these are a bunch of uh, links about the, the GPU operator mainly, but from here you can go, uh, there are subsections in the, the documentation where you can actually go to uh, and uh, check for some uh, details on all the other components that are part of the, the GPU uh, 
uh, operator. And Matthias actually asked me to uh, to add a uh, one slide on the uh, different products on which you would be able to run uh, the um, the containers with GPU support. Here is a, a list of everything that is available uh, right now from the uh, um, uh, from Nvidia uh, from a data center perspective. Uh, all the applications that uh, I've mentioned previously are only supported on the data center grade GPUs. I mentioned multiple times the A100 and the A30, which are mainly targeted for, uh, for the compute. Uh, we just launched the A2, which is a GPU, uh, a, a small footprint GPU that is targeting um, mostly edge AI and inferencing, and then uh, there's a range of, uh, of um, uh, GPUs for professional graphics and uh, uh, virtualized uh, desktops. There are different capabilities. Uh, again, I'm not going to go to to all the details of the the different GPUs. Um, if you're interested in how you, how would you uh, choose a specific GPU, just uh, reach out to to me and uh, we can have a further discussion. But from the Kubernetes perspective and the support that we have on the GPU operator, it, uh, you can take a look at the um, support matrix and you will see that all these GPUs are currently supported by the GPU operator. So especially if you're having one of the, the latest GPUs uh, and this is the, uh, the latest series, the, the MPR, based on the MPR architecture, all these are currently and fully supported inside of the, of the GPU operator. And the A100 and A30 are the only ones which are supporting the multi-instance GPUs. And uh, again, these are fully supported under uh, Kubernetes. So with that, uh, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, 